Thanks, Moira. Uh, Charles Darwin is a household name. Uh, he has impacted human uh, history and thought and science like perhaps no one else. And uh, many, many years after his death, uh, there are about 100 surviving members of his family, one of whom is with us right now, Sir James Barlow. Welcome. Hello, Jim. Sir James. Thank you. Just quickly, to become a sir, are you knighted by the Queen, or is this something that uh, you have inherited? <laughs> More usually, yes, you're knighted by the Queen. Yeah. In my case, my great-grandfather was Surgeon General to Queen Victoria, and as such, she bestowed upon him one of the, the last inher hereditary baronesses in the British Empire. So I was just born. So you are a baronet. <laughs> I'm a baronet, yes. And, and, and the reference to that which a baronet oversees is called a baronet C. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, does this, does this include land and castles and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not anymore, no. <laughs> it would be nice. Now, you, you're a Canadian. I am a Canadian. And, and how did that happen? Well, in 1995, I came along over. 94, actually, I came along over. and. Uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time, so I stayed. Um, actually, God said, get over there. And I said, no, I don't want to. And he said, yes, but I came. Well, I want to get back to that God said uh, business in a moment, but let's just uh, go back a bit. I think it was 1831 that uh, your great-great-grandfather set out with uh, Captain Fitzroy. That's right. In the Beagle mm -hmm. yep, to yep. go around the world. And um, he, he was not necessarily, at that point, uh, formally trained as a naturalist, or was he? No, he was a, he, he, it was a, a great hobby, yeah. a great hobby. Yeah. He was a wonderful man, a very passionate family man with a lot of spiritual identity, actually. And um, he uh, was actually taken along to be uh, a companion to, to Captain Fitzroy. And uh, actually, Fitzroy really rather hoped that uh, this would... Uh, uh, destroy the uh, the new science that was coming along on uh, geological uh, endeavors and uh, various ideas that were coming against the creation six day seven day creation period now there, there was a uh, I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding when it comes to your great great grandfather I mean he was the one who really popularized um, the uh, theory of evolution and specifically natural selection but there were a number of, uh, of thinkers, scientists, mm -hmm. uh, who predated him and also surrounded him, who were also thinking this way, right? Oh yes, he wasn't alone in that thought. Yeah. In fact, there was a, it was a bit of a, a crude race at one point to yeah. be the first to get that theory in print. And uh, he was the one that won that. Well, di yeah, didn't, mm. didn't, he, didn't he, I think he, he was full of a little bit self-disgust at doing it, as I recall in my yes, reading. Yes, he was. One. But mm -hmm. there was a young guy, was it Wallace was his name? That's right. Uh, yeah. Who had, was about to publish something, and uh, your, your great-great-grandfather, even though some of his children were sick and so on, he, he kind of rushed it through to well, be the first? Well, they both put papers together at the yeah. same time to the Royal Society. Right. But uh, Darwin was the one that actually came out with a full edition, so to speak, more quickly. Right. And, and uh, do you think, that, what, what do you know from your family history? Uh, I, I couldn't find anything as I researched your family, but uh, anything from your family history to suggest uh, how he felt about this uh, uh, natural selection idea taking off the way it did? He was deeply concerned. He was a very spiritual man. Yeah. He was a very loving man. He had a, a wonderful family life. Yeah. And I think he was disturbed that what he observed and what he saw in science was in some way interacting in a, in a bad way with the, um, with, with the classical view of, of the creation story in the Bible. And he found that very difficult to rationalize. He certainly did not want to hurt his wife, who was a passionate Christian, in coming up with the ideas, but he was a scientist yeah. and he felt he had to put the ideas out there and let the world see how it took them. Did he see a conflict between uh, scientific endeavor and, uh, and biblical faith? No. No. Absolutely not. No. No, n and neither do I. No. I, yeah, and let, let's, well, uh, just before we get to that, one, one other question. Uh, there was this theory put forward by uh, 
a lady evangelist, whose name escapes me, that your great-great-grandfather repented of uh, natural selection mm -hmm. on his deathbed, mm -hmm. but his daughter said there was no way. He didn't repent of anything. Yeah. He yeah. was already committed to the Lord. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's anything in hard and fast writing about yeah. that. Yeah. It certainly is my belief that he had a, a passionate battle in his own mind between what the theory meant to his Christian faith and spirituality. Yeah. But I don't think that there's any doubt that he allowed his spirituality to continue through all of that. Was, was he not at one point considering going into uh, the ministry? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. He, was, uh, he was tracking for the ministry when he was uh, uh, sort of sent off on this trip around the world. Yeah, at 26 years of age. He was just, right. just a young guy. That's right, yeah. But he obviously was prepared because he brought back over 1,500 specimens in bottles, so he must have packed a lot of bottles. Well, it's the <laughs> standard little thing of a little child who goes around picking up beetles and butterflies yeah. and putting them in bottles. Yeah. Well, it was a very common thing to do then, and yeah. uh, everybody wanted to collect, and there was nobody smacking you on the hand to say you shouldn't do it. Yeah. So he did, and uh, that was the scientific experiment. Now Fitzroy the captain uh, with whom he had his differences at times ended up committing suicide. Yes he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he found the, he, he found a, a lot of things very difficult um, dealing with the whole idea of uh, creation and evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was his passion that evolution would be uh, proved to be incorrect. Um, from from his voyage and what he found was here was Charles picking up all these things and yeah. cementing the theory rather than right. destroying it. He also had a, a lot of battles himself yeah. which I, I think ultimately contributed to the suicide. Now how is it that the great-great-grandson of uh, Charles Darwin is a committed believer, uh, unapologetically so, who mm -hmm. uh, is um, very intrigued with and committed to intelligent design. How, how does that happen? Well, um, I was always brought up in a spiritual way, but never really as a child understood what that relationship was all about, yeah. that personal relationship was all about. And I remember lying in bed in a dormitory in a boarding school in England and listening to all the nighttime chatter of the boys and uh, um, their sort of encounters with life and thinking, I haven't had these, I don't understand these. And I remember them talking about girls. Mm. I go, ooh, mm. dear. And an audible voice spoke to me that rocked my bed that said, at the age of 15, the voice said, I've got a wife for you. You just keep going. Mm. And i never forget that. Mm. It took me 32 years to find that wife <laughs> after that, right. but I kept holding on to that, and that was the start of a real relationship. Now your sense was that this word was from the Lord himself? Absolutely. Yeah. I hadn't a clue at the time. Yeah. I just knew that something was very... I, I knew it was God. And did you at some point go through what uh, is classically referred to as a conversion experience? Yes, I did. I went to university and uh, in Freshers' Week there, yeah. they had this uh, crusade, I guess. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so I went along rather begrudgingly and uh, was so impacted by the uh, message that I prayed the sinner's prayer. Didn't know what I was doing, really. It didn't make a lot of sense. And for the next three or four years, I wandered around really not really sure what this Jesus was that was supposedly inside me. Mm. And it wasn't until uh, I came back to uh, Cambridge in England to work that I was introduced to the Holy Spirit mm. and found myself going through the experience of the baptism of the Holy mm. Spirit. And that indwelling mm. gave me such a personal relationship walking, talking, living, breathing relationship that I don't mind what people tell me now. I just know I've got that relationship.